Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have James on Prague, who is one of the pioneers and one of the world's most respected spiritual teachers. And we're going to be talking about his newest book, Adventures of the Soul. So people are, are, are sitting at the edge of their seat. What happens when we die? Um, <laughs> I know that you say that, that it's painless. Don't they know about it? They've only done it thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> Exactly. The well, nice they thing is, they've done it. Well, the nice thing here, here's the here's the exciting things and the depressing things after reading your book. It's nice that you don't feel anything because I think you know the process of dying can be painful, but when you die, there's right. no pain, right? Right. Exactly right. Okay. Exactly here's what right. depressed me that was in your book. You say, no. well, <laughs> but when our minds and our spirits, you know, our body, we leave our bodies. There's a silver cord that attach attaches us to a network. Um, Somewhat like the internet, I assume, <laughs> but it's like some type yeah, well, of spiritual yeah, well, that, network. Not, not a silver cord, kind of like, well, I think I talked about the tapestry. There's at the top of the head, there's like a ribbon. Yeah. That I, I saw my, my, my near the experience, there was some kind of a ribbon sensation, and that at, at, at the end of our lives, we look at our lives in life review, and we see all of those influences we gave to that overall matrix, if you will, of everyone, that we're part of everybody, oh. and we see how we influence the world, positive mm -hmm. or negative. Ah, okay, so so the silver cord then attaches to this, uh, at the top of our head, or this no, ribbon. No, so not a silver cord. The silver cord is something very different. The silver okay. cord is your solar plexus, yeah? Okay. And that attaches the spirit to the physical body. That's the silver cord. Oh. What I was referring to in the book was a ribbon, kind of, a, when I had my vision of near-death experience, when I had the experience, it was kind of like a, just a regular ribbon mm -hmm. at the top of the head, like the crown chakra, mm -hmm. to, it seemed like a tapestry, if you will, hmm. or a matrix. And I mm -hmm. remember that every thought... I had was transferred as a color in that ribbon. If it was happy or light thoughts, and light, I mean light colors, pastel colors. If there was a negative thoughts, uh, angry thoughts, the colors were muted and darker. And that influenced also that overall tapestry. Mm -hmm. So at the end of my life, I had the realization that if I, when I get to the end of my life and I look back at that tapestry, how I influenced it, did it make it more beautiful or did it make it Ah. All right, so you had a near-death experience. So when you had your near-death experience, you saw these colors that flowed yes. through this ribbon. Well, what were your I colors? Saw, I never <laughs> saw the colors. I, had, I never saw the colors. It was more than that because it was, it was a multi – it was really interesting. It was a multi-awareness type of thing. Mm -hmm. I knew it. I felt it. I was aware that all this happened at once, that you know we're responsible for everything that we do. Um, we really are, and how we yeah. receive it, how we react. Yeah. So it was, it was more than just seeing it. It was being aware of that, the knowingness of it all, really. And, and, and I saw one of the videos that you have on your website, and you have three, three different videos on your website um, mm -hmm. on what happens when we die. And then you, you did a perfect example where you said, let's say you scream at the person at the coffee shop. You'll feel the pain that you gave that person, and then that person, then, if that person went and screamed at their kids, you'll feel that too. It sounds kind of awful. Um, <laughs> I know. Isn't it great? It's horrible, isn't it? Isn't that horrible? But how long does it last? Know it's horrible. <laughs> When you die, it's horrible. If you're a shithead, you'll feel it. And everyone, <laughs> you'll feel everything. Now, so this is really important. Now, it's really important. And most religions teach it in their own way <clears throat> and spiritual philosophies. And it, it really is, whether you want to call it karma, whether you want to call it energy, whatever you want to call yeah. it, it is pure energy. I often say, you know, every as I say in the book as well, we're all God. And, and God to me is creator. We're the creator. We are part of that big force of creation, mm -hmm. and we're constantly creating, creating with our thoughts, and our thoughts are things, so our thought is energy. So um, at the end of your life, you have that life review, you see how you use that energy, and like I said, it's not, it's not those great grandiose gestures like giving money to um, a foundation, it's opening the door for somebody, it's mm -hmm. smiling for somebody, mm -hmm. it's, it's honoring somebody. So mm -hmm. you, and at the end of your life, you, you know, people say, is there a heaven, is there a hell? Yes. It's not religious. It's not like a hellfire and brimstone. And heaven is not harps and, and angels. It's what you've created. So if you lived a decent life and you did the best you could with what you had, you at least attempted to. Right. Because this is a schoolroom down here. And we, you know, we're in school, we're learning. Right. But at least if you attempt to do, bring love and compassion wherever you can, then you've done your job. So mm -hmm. when you look back at your life review, it's almost like looking at the tests that you were given and right. you mark your own test scores. And you yeah. see the influence you had, that your energy had on that person and on that person and that person. So like you said, you go to Starbucks and you go to the Starbucks and you say, hi, how are you today? To the barista, which I've done this many times, by the way. Yeah. They, look, they look at me now in Starbucks. You're going to and heaven just, for sure. At least yeah. the Starbucks heaven. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
that'd be fine with me. So, <laughs> and so what happened was, um, I, you know, you think about it. Well, if I yeah, said something positive to that person, what's that person that started Barista went to work that day, was not in a great mood. And if I came in and I changed that energy and I brought it back to his heart space or love or, or just spread that, that yeah. vibration, let's just say. And that person felt good, kind of, on some level. Yeah. That feels better. And they turn to a coworker and smile to a coworker. And that coworker turns to call some family member. And they feel good now because that energy is being passed around. That's exactly what it is. It's called what we call, it's um, known as the rippling effect. Mm. So you have a rippling effect. I'm worried because yeah. here's my order. I have a, I have a triple decaf um, <laughs> almond milk. milk <laughs> and I want to be a creamy foam. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to be, <laughs> it's like called the pain in the butt effect. But, but you know what you said? So if, you say, if you say you're worried, that's great. And the reason why I say it in my lectures and my classes yeah. and my workshops, I always talk about it because if people have that sense then now, that, listen, what I give out, I get back. What I, what I give out, I will see that again when I pass over. It forces them, it forces them then to stop and rethink what they do, mm-hmm. rethink how they respond, rethink mm-hmm. how they treat people. And it begins the process of mindfulness. Mm-hmm. They become mm-hmm. mindful of their thoughts, that the thoughts of energy. They're mindful that they create it. Yeah. They're mindful that the atmosphere they're giving out is what they're going to experience when they pass. So in that respect, hopefully that will help them to change their their attitudes and bring them up to a higher level of awareness and mindfulness. Okay, and what's, the, what does, perfect. what's <laughs> the scorecard? Because, you know, I'm not perfect every single time, <laughs> moment of the day, although I endeavor. Well, <laughs> none of us are perfect, but let me just say this. It, number one, you have the awareness. Mm-hmm. That counts a lot. Mm-hmm. That counts a lot because you have the awareness. So now when you get to the spirit world and you have your life review you can't say to them, you know, I knew nothing about this. Because that's what they're going to say. Oh, yes, you did. You spoke to James Van Prog on the phone. You read his book. You're responsible now. So now oh, it's giving back responsibility. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, now honey. you've cursed me just by the Sorry, very nature honey, of this interview. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So if you have the awareness, you're given the chance of knowing, and then you still acted like a jerk. But you know, okay. So let's say I'm a jerk 50% of the time and pretty nice kind of 50% of the time. Um, what happens during this life review? Is it like, oh no? Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> what happens? This is, do you feel both the? Do you? I don't know if you recall because I'm sure this happens when you're in a different state. But do you recall how long it lasts? Is it? Like a half an hour, an hour. Like I know you can't even tell time, but and then what do you mm-hmm. feel during a life review? Well, number one, it's missed opportunities, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> missed opportunities. So people often ask me, you know, my loved one in heaven or hell. I say, well, how do they live their life? Because as you know, in this earth world, when we do something, we say something to someone we really don't mean, and we need something we shouldn't have said or mm-hmm. shouldn't have done, we feel kind of bad about it for a little bit. We really do it. It plays over in our mind over and over again. Mm-hmm. Imagine when you're in a dimension when there's no time that's made of pure thought, and your thoughts are 10 times, 20 times, 30 times stronger. Oh, no. Imagine if you don't like what you did to somebody, you feel really bad. It can be for a while until you forgive oh, yourself fully. Man. <laughs> All right, so if, if okay, so I, I have, a, I, have, I know, I've done a bunch of programs on forgiveness, but if I can actually forgive myself at that moment, and now you know what, I made mistakes. I'm only human. I tried exactly. my best. Exactly. Then you're fine. Then, then I can, you're Then you're aware. Mm-hmm. Then, then, then you're I'm aware. Next better. thing won't do that. Okay. All right. So um, let's go more into the details. So I want to just, I want to get really granular here. I don't know why. I guess it's my nature. And I guess some something will become rever- rippling granular back. Granular or versus... granola? I'm not sure what you're saying. <laughs> I want to get granular. I'm in Colorado right now. I want to be granular about this granola. Okay. Um, so, okay. so, so here's the thing that kind of depressed me. You said that when we die, our consciousness, you know, where our minds and thoughts still remain there. I, I, I kind of had this image of me floating into to heaven and being a slightly like instead of CJ 1.0, CJ, you know, 5.0 at least, a little bit better <laughs> version of myself. But yet I, but is it true? Do I just remain CJ 1.0 or do I, do I get a little bit better when I go up there? Oh, you're just a mess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the, it, it's hard to explain that. And I just did this today on my TV show. It's, it's hard to yeah. explain a lot of this because we put our human comprehension on to, to another dimension. Yes. So it's hard to put a three-dimensional law or rule onto a fifth or sixth dimension, mm-hmm. right? Yes. The thing is this. It seems as if people that, pay, when they pass over, they're exactly the same as they were here. 
So if you have a certain mindset, for instance, say a certain religion, right. you will have the same belief system when you pass. So my mother was mm-hmm. raised Catholic, mm-hmm. and she went to Mass every day, the whole thing. When she passed away, a priest came to get her, because that was her belief system. Yes. Some people see Jesus. That's her belief system. Is it really Jesus? Hmm, I don't know. It's a belief system. Yeah. So that belief system, that world exists for that person to believe that. Yeah. So, the, and, and, and the opposite, this is really interesting, too. So if someone was a non-believer, let's say, in life after death. Yeah, an atheist. Oh, this is a great one. What do you hear this yeah. one? This is a great story. I was doing a demonstration for someone like I'm going to be doing in Seattle. Mm-hmm. I was doing this demonstration, and I'm talking to this girl, and her mother came through or some relative. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this spirit man next close to her, and he's folding his arms. And I knew that was her dad who passed. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking to the girl. I'm not telling you yet about him because I'm having a conversation with this man in my head with him. And I said, you're her father. He goes, yes. I don't want to talk to her. And I said, well, well, well Why? And he's folding his arms, and he said, I didn't believe in this on earth. Why would I want to do it now? <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't yeah. that tell you everything? That is. <laughs> Doesn't that tell you everything? So it's like unbelievable. But they have that belief system. It's so yeah. strong a belief system that they're holding on to it. Now, it's the same thing here on the earth. Mm-hmm. We can change. We can open ourselves up. We can take the time and process, becoming more mindful, mm-hmm. becoming more aware, becoming more compassionate. We have that choice. We have free will to do that. We can go and help someone across the street or let them suffer across the street on their own. We have that every day. We have a, a mm-hmm. choice. Mm-hmm. That's what life is. Life is a series of choices. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's really what we're down to learn about choices. And all choices are based upon either love or fear. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's mm-hmm. really it. Mm-hmm. So in the spirit world as well, in those dimensions, you can grow and evolve over there. You bet you can. But you also can stay in a certain belief system as long as you choose to. If you don't want to grow, you won't grow. Mm-hmm. I was once at a seance with a very famous physical medium named mm-hmm. Leslie Flint back in England. And, uh, and actually, people can hear this on the, on the Internet. There's actual tapes of this. And he was actually the fo- a physical medium with a voice box would appear in the air made of ectoplasm. A, a true story, an amazing story, sitting in a seance room. And speaking of highly evolved beings, through the voice box, and all of a sudden a lady comes through, and they call her, I think, Salvation Annie. Mm-hmm. And she said, you're all going to go to hell. This is a dead person <laughs> speaking. And the man who spoke over her, the, the spirit guide, said, she's unaware of what's going on. He said, she's on a realm, whether she's unaware of anything else. That's the uh, realm that she's at. So it, it seems that we can go, you know, you have to earn your way to go higher to the higher realms with love. You and those the higher realms come down to the lower ones, ah. but you can't just go to the higher realms unless you've, you've kind of earned it. Oh, so it's a one-way ticket. You can go up, but and you can go. You can't go up unless you've earned it, and you can actually go down at any point if you're in the upper realm to like chat with the people. Yeah. So there's there's the astral realm, there's the ethereal realm, there's the angelic realm. So when you're in these realms, you can actually go to other, in the astral realm, can you travel around in various places, including going to the ethereal realm, or do you have to get an invitation to go? So, in the Bible, it says, my father has a house with many mansions. Mm -hmm. And and what I believe that means at the various spiritual levels that exist, which I think are a mansion, my my house, you know, levels within levels and levels, worlds within worlds. And I think you go to that level which you created based upon your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, live this certain life, then you will go to that that level which you created. That being said, we as a spiritual being exist on many levels. So right Right. now, this is the densest part of ourselves, the physical part. Right. But there's also, you know, the different aspects of our beingness on the ethereal part right now, the mental part, the emotional levels. So you do, you know, you are a part of other levels higher. But um, the, you get to the highest levels through the energy of love, and that's really what mm. it's about. Okay. And, and, yeah. So even within the astral plane, if you want to there go to other levels, the yeah. Plane. Okay. Many so, regions. Yep. Okay, got it. And can I visit any of the regions if I'm like, hey, I want to check out what's happening in the Muslim area? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They talk all sides about taking um, tours, if you will. Oh. Uh, my mother came through once and said, I, so I went to the lower astral world. And it's a shame because um, people aren't aware there where they're living in you know, little like hovels or houses, darker. Uh. People don't love each other. It's a little, you know, there are different realms. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like here in a way, like going to some alleyways or going to some mansions. And, yeah. It, you know? Wow, interesting. You kind of like. I, I get there, I'm CJ 1.0 when I die, I'm CJ 1.0 there, and the only way I can, can become CJ 5.0 is if I, if I l- learn to love, 
within those realms, and then I kind of go to other maybe higher realms. Is that the idea? There's still That's a game. Correct. Okay. All right. Now, what happens to my body when I die? Am I? Do I? Do I? Can I come back as Cleopatra? That's what I really want to know. Or do I have to no. remain in the same body that I have now? <laughs> No, you. The body is gone. Worms eat it, baby. That's it. Okay. Done. Okay. So you're not your body. The body is only a vehicle that you use for a very short period of time for your spirit yeah. to express itself. Yeah. yeah. So what what form do I show up in? Like a. Well, well let me sh- let me show you that. So so if you decide to come back on this earth level, your soul decides to come back here. Yes. And with your other souls, your family members or your teachers and, right. and soul mates, you know, right. we choose to come back at the most optimum time for our souls to grow. Yes. So you will pick a time when you will um, come back where it's really advantageous for your own growth, okay? Mm -hmm. And you come back as a soul group of people. Mm -hmm. You tend to come back, it seems, not only do you evolve spiritually, but you also have to work with the genetic link that you have as far as physically Mm -hmm. within that family unit. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if there's a family unit that's genetically disposed to high blood pressure, it's almost like that has to be worked out through the generations. Mm -hmm. So you also have to come back with what the variants are for the physicalness that the bodies that 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 family group is known for or to work out right okay sense? yes but then what happens once i leave that body when i'm up in the spirit world can i take the form of a cat cleopatra or do i am i do, do i have to be in that spirit world or a cup like be, what do i what can i be <laughs> well you are light, so you're, okay. you know what we're talking about here. You might, but they won't even have there. You can have some essence of light. Of you identify more with that light being than you are a physical being. Ah, you okay. Are, you might be a whole different form than we're even aware of in the three-dimensional world. Ah, interesting. Okay, got it. so so it, because we're all energy when we're there, we can probably take a lot of different forms. I want to. Yeah, try. For instance, why can't you be part of an animal? It's the same thing. It's like water. Yeah. Why can't you seep into everything? We are part of everything anyway. It's we have this. We have this rule in this three-dimensional world that we got to be in a box. Right. We're limited. We're not. We're just the opposite. We're limitless. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Now, people who can't cross over, what's happening for those people? Like it, they, they, the Buddhists have this idea of the bardo, which is supposedly, I think, an in-between place between heaven and earth, or the astral plane and earth, where people who seem to get confused just kind of hang out. Um, is that what ghosts, <laughs> disembodied ghosts are? I'm, I, I'm, I know I'm just confused. So help, help me, educate me, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're just crazy. I know. <laughs> so I, I like. I think a lot of uh, many many traditions yeah. have belief systems where there is that purgatory, that bardo, that that the hanging out area. Yeah. That right after you, you you leave the body, I, I do believe that there is an adjustment period. No doubt about it. Mm-hmm. I I think that every individual has a different experience. Like, mm-hmm. You know, for for instance, there might be one person who goes directly into light without pass and go. There you go. Yeah. Um, and there might be another person who's so mindset, is so connected to family, is so connected to unfinished business, is so connected to, God, i got to give my wife that insurance policy. She'll never find it. i got to stay yeah. close to the uh-huh. Earth's atmosphere in order to influence her where that is, and that we can call those ghosts, if you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there might be those that have not passed right away over, because they're still obsessed with something on the right. earth. Mm-hmm. Think of a mother who dies in childbirth and has a baby. She's not going to want to go right into the, to the light of the high vibration because in her mind, she thinks the closer she can be to that baby, it'll help, and that is earth. So she'll stick uh, close to the atmosphere of the okay. earth. Okay. See what I'm saying? So it's all the mind, isn't it? It's all the mind concept. Uh, it's all the mind. Okay, Again, so that person, in that case, that mom who stays to be closer with her baby, is she in the astral plane, but she's just kind of hanging out closer to Earth, even though she's... Sure, exactly, exactly. Uh, a region very close to the Earth, a doorway, a, 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 a place which is in between the physical and the spirit or the astral, yeah. you know, in that level. Yeah. Well, I love the, the example that you gave in your book. So we're talking to James M. Prague. We're talking about Adventures of the Soul, his newest book. And uh, if you want to find out more about James and also us, you can check us out at www.fireduponcj.com. And James, tell me about the um, your website and where we can find out about your coming to um, Seattle this weekend, right, to talk about Seattle this Seattle this weekend. Everybody listening, hearing my voice right now, you need to go to this website workshop and you go to the demonstration. Okay, so Friday night, and if you've never seen media, it's a great opportunity. Friday night, I'll be in Seattle um, doing a demonstration, which is a three-hour communication with spirit. It's a really interesting, and I'm going to do a blending where I actually have people in the audience will do a blending, bring it through their loved ones that way. 
And then Saturday and Sunday, I'm doing a workshop there, and I'm going to help people to open up to mediumship intuition, but doing mediumship as well and doing it in a way which I'm sure that a lot of them never experienced before with the emphasis going to be evidential mediumship where you bring through names, descriptions, details, not just, oh, mm-hmm. this lady here, she feels good. No, that's a bunch of crap. You want to get the real evidence. So I'm going to be teaching. I have a lot of friends in Seattle. A lot of people in Seattle are great. Their minds are so open, and I just need, they need a little more grounding, some of them, and um, a couple more gla- cups of Starbucks. They'll be fine. Yeah, so if anyone's interested, they can go on my website, which is www.vanprague.com, and go to the events page. Or they can also go on my Facebook page, which is James Van Prague, and it's the fan one, which I think we have over like 300,000 people. And I go on there every day, and I'm, I write in there, and I that's the people communicate with me is Facebook. So the thing we have here in this – every thing we have on this earth that – is positive, like lakes and, and trees and gardens and flowers, we have there and then some. So there are colors over there which we don't have here, which we're not even aware of. It's a, it's a very multifaceted, beautiful, incredible place. One story I've heard, um, and I've heard many, but one in particular I remember, I just love this, was um, a, a woman, um, her husband had passed over 40 years before she did, and they were so in love with each other, so in love that it was heartbroken. She never married anybody else afterwards. When she passed to the other side of life, one of the first things he did was he, he escorted her over, brought, showed her around, and brought her to his home, which she was like, well, it's a beautiful home. You know, no, it, it's just it fits his character, the home. He went to the back garden, and there was a beautiful garden, and he said, this is my flower for you. And he starts showing her the flower, and he's, he's saying, this is how much I've missed you, and I love you. And the flower starts growing. And all these beautiful colors, reds and oranges and purples and pinks, and it got more beautiful as it was growing, taller, 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 like Jack the Beanstalk, overtook the house, was higher than the house, and it was the most beautiful colors. He said, that's all the energy of the love I've had for you for the past 40 years. So things like that, you know, it's all these magical kind of things we think is magic here. It's almost like probably, you know, D- D- Disneyland 10 times stronger. So having that awareness, uh, having the awareness, number one, that, that we're more than just what we think we are and that there's that there's always a better way. And to get to that better way, that atmosphere, of course, goes also a lot with, self, with believing in self and loving yourself. But I will say that it's really, really important that once you have that awareness that things get better and better with love, you then, inside your soul, you open yourself up to the awareness that if I love more, I'll experience even better things. So that's why we keep on coming back to the earth, because we want more and more of an experience. That's really what it's about. Well, well, I mean, again, we're placing we're placing um, a human conception of these things, so it's hard, you know, to get a full sense of it. But the, the things we have down here, such as our schools and, and, and laws, um, higher halls of learning and awareness and, you know, uh, places of learning. They have that and then some on the other side. So they celebrate learning. They celebrate expansion of of wisdom, of knowledge, halls of wisdom, halls of knowledge over there, um, that they celebrate that. And so you can always, your soul can experience that, the higher truth, the higher philosophies, if you will, from the highest of levels, bringing all the way down. And you can be a student of that side for a long, long time. Again, we're talking about, you know, it's infinite. It's not, you can stay there for two years, come back to Earth. You don't. You gather knowledge, you gather wisdom, you gather all this. Perhaps you're going to be an artist in your next life, and you go to school to perfect your uh, innate qualities of art and structure and aesthetics. So you'll study and prepare for your next incarnation. Um, and that's what you do. You prepare, uh, one of the things you prepare for next time around, if you will. Because you don't come back empty-handed, you come back fully loaded with what you need inside you to succeed. And there are those beings that come back to the earth who don't have any sense of who they are, that until they pass over and they, oh my God, I had all this inside me and I didn't even realize it. So that's pretty sad, but sometimes that's, you know, that's what it is. I go. I love you. Thank. You. I look forward to seeing you maybe in Seattle. Okay. Thanks, sweetheart. Bye, bye. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.